right, hello everybody from a sound card and video processor inside of your computer and more locally from the Lane County Ice Center here in Eugene. My name is Isaac Rosenthal, joined by Brent Kelly. Some more Oregon Ducks hockey action. We are live tonight. Glad you found us on our new channel. We'll still have the archive put up at uh, the same old place. And a uh, great game we've got set up for us here tonight. Last night it was a 9-6 to six finish with Cal coming home the victor, although really a one-goal game. Two of those goals from Cal scored on the empty net. They, they do count, but 9-6 to six doesn't tell the whole story. It was a back-and-forth high-scoring game. It was kind of exactly what we expected to see. Maybe even a little bit better look from the Ducks than we thought we might get. And we should have another great game tonight. Brent, as you kind of think about last night and you look on the roster, where are your thoughts going for tonight? What do the Ducks need to do differently? Well, definitely it all starts for Cal. And on Cal, they are led by their captain, their star player, Michael Leone. We called his name at least six times, almost every single shot on goal. Everything ran through him. The offense runs through their captain. He had six goals out of nine total, out of Cal's nine total goals from last night. And they're a mobile defense led by Jeffrey Chen and Kevin Wang, numbers eight and 11 for Cal. They really led the way the entire time last night. They were out there on almost every kind of possession where Cal was really in their uh, in the duck zone for uh, two to three minutes at a time so uh Cal's mobile defense and their star players, that's the Ducks' focus they got to focus on tonight. And depth scoring for the Ducks yesterday was actually fantastic, getting goals from a uh, different player each and every time. Of course, led by Trevor Shaw and Nathan Lutz, providing some really outstanding highlight reel goals, and those were absolutely fantastic to watch. So I think we're going to see even more fireworks tonight. We're going to see a lot of goals, a lot of deeks, a lot of good passes, and we're going to have a really fun game tonight. Yeah, we should. We talked a little bit with the Ducks coaching staff before the game. We do expect to see Jackson Howery tonight. We'll, we'll see. You never, you never know exactly with when the, those kind of game misconduct penalties get doled out, whether you're going to see the player the next day, what exactly gets on the score sheet at the end of the night. But as of right now, our understanding is the Ducks will have their full complement of players. If they do, that's a good sign. If they don't, it's going to be tough because as soon as they lost Howery yesterday, it, it got really difficult for the Ducks. This team is, it's deep. They have, you know, they have good contributions on everybody that, I, that they ice, but the numbers just aren't there. It's kind of a losing math equation for the Ducks sometimes, and you take one person out of that, especially one skater, and it's, it's just going to be that much more difficult. Yeah, as we kind of talked about, their depth scoring was really on display yesterday, and once Jackson got ejected from the game, that, that kind of left a hole on the Ducks' second line, because we know that first line's always going to be in attack. Uh, guys are going to kind of come in and out of the lineup, but that second line, I, I was saying yesterday, was pr developing some pretty good chemistry, and we're kind of uh, complimenting on Jackson's hockey IQ out there. He uh, really had a pretty good game yesterday. So we'll have to see tonight uh, if Jackson's going to be in the lineup. And I think the the top line for the Ducks are going to be relying again on their depth scoring. And I think that's how you're going to beat a team like Howe, who has that very uh, highly talented star player, Michael Leone. That's where you're going to kind of beat teams who have that franchise player. You really just want to kind of rely on your depth scoring, try and neutralize him and have the other guys out there. When, when he's on the bench, have your guys out there parting in a few goals for your team. Yeah, and I, I was just going to bring that up. You made a really good point last night. The Ducks need to capitalize every single time that number five is not on the ice. The Ducks need to be applying pressure. They need to be looking for scoring opportunities. They need to be doing all these things when he is on the ice, but especially when he's not on the ice. And he's usually going to be out there, you know, if he's there 26, Varela is normally going to be out there with him as well. And it's a Cal team that's maybe a little top-heavy. Um, you know, they, they get most of their contribution from those top two guys. When they're not there, you really, really need to capitalize. You got any final thoughts before we, uh, before we take another break, before puck drop here? Definitely going to focus on the defense. There's uh, too many times last night Ducks were stuck in their own zone, but when they when they were able on the attack, every kind of shot they put on net, especially those low rebounds, they were getting a lot of good scoring opportunities. So I think the transition from defense to offense is the big key for tonight. Try to get out of your own zone, through the neutral zone, and into the Cal uh, defensive zone. So that transition game is going to be huge for the Ducks and uh, going to create a lot of scoring opportunities. 
Well, we're going to take a quick break here. We'll leave you with a little bit more of the Oregon Ducks hockey theme composed and performed by Tanner Ferris. We thought that had been lost to cyberspace. Little did we know it was actually stuck in the background of our broadcast. So now that we've found the file, we're going to use it the way it was designed. It's a nice little theme that Tanner wrote for us a couple years ago. I want to also give a quick thank you to Diana running production for us tonight and may have Sam Rosenberg running camera as well. May uh, Brett may have to pull double duty and do camera along with Collar. We, we make work what we can here. It's a team effort and uh, you're a big part of that team at home as well. So we certainly appreciate each and every one of you viewers. Don't you go anywhere. We'll take a quick break before we come back for Puck Drop. Thank you so much.
And hello again, everybody. Just under five minutes left to puck drop, so we're just going to try and keep you company until the anthem time, and then it'll be time for the first period. I, uh, first, we'll, we'll mention the goalies. We are going to see, we believe, two different... on the Oregon broadcast, but we got our camera back. Nothing's keeping us off the air tonight, baby. <laughs> Happy to be here. Less than two minutes left on that warm-up clock. As we were starting to get into, we expect we're going to see some different goaltenders tonight. Ben Green led the Ducks on the ice for warm-ups. Typically, that's an indicator that he's going to start. And then on the other side, 35, Sammy Morris led the Bears off the ice from Falls Church, Virginia. Oh boy, He's, look at that date of birth that's listed on the Cal roster. February 31st, year 2000. Wow. February the 31st is listed as Sammy Morris's birthday, so I call shenanigans <laughs> on that. We'll see. We did actually see Morris for 20 minutes yesterday. Uh, according to the score sheet, he made three stops on four shots, so pretty limited... Uh, Pretty limited sample size. That was also with the Ducks roster already down by one at that point. Could be a, a different look tonight. And then Ben Green, very solid goaltender. Noah Rosenberg is as well. Uh, they're, they're sort of different goalies, though. And, uh, you know, it's a real asset for a team when you've got, you know, when you can have a 1 and a 1A or a 1 and an A. I don't even really know who you would who you would give which title to. It really seems like the Ducks have two number one goaltenders. Yeah, especially for college hockey because you're playing on those back-to-back -back games all the time. So that's where it's really most important. It's not like the NHL or any kind of other league where you're playing throughout the week. You kind of want to have one set starter because kind of the old saying is if you have kind of two really solid goalies, you really have one really franchise goalie, but for the Ducks, that's, it's kind of a lot different in college hockey. You want to have two very solid starters to go back-to-back -back nights and basically kind of so the team plays their same style no matter who's in that. So I think the Ducks are thrilled to have Ben Green in there tonight. It's going to be a really good matchup and uh, see warm-ups are just about ending right now and I think that's going to be coming up. 
man. It's going to be a great, uh, great game tonight. Yeah, it, it should be real fun. Again, 9-6 was the final last night, although Cal's final two goals came on the empty net. So really for all intents and purposes, uh, a one-goal game last night as Trevor shot and uh, 91 Nick of the Ducks. That's Nick Jones collect the pucks from the Cal goal. How is that still Trevor Schott's job? <laughs> it's a rookie duty. That should be the rookie job. I think Trevor, Trevor likes some of those rookie duties. He would never admit it. But we're going to take a quick break here for the lineups and the anthem, and then we will be back. And with the paperwork in order, we're just about set for puck drop here. Brent, you've had a chance to hear the announcer, uh, public address announcer, give us those starting lineups. Not really any surprises in them, but uh, what do you think we're going to see just out of this very first group? No, the starters don't really matter too much in hockey, but we, we go with what we got. Yeah, so it looks like uh, Coach Oren Lim are going to go with their second line of uh, Howery, Galuli, and Lutz. And they had a really good game last night, Lutz, with the really awesome highlight real goal and uh, Jackson Harry made a lot of smart plays and Gooley out there with a the right-handed shot uh, yeah this is a really nice uh, balanced line so they're going up against the Leone line so we'll we'll keep uh, keep track to see if this line will be matched up against Leone's line throughout the rest of the game Just some logistical stuff we're sorting out. The linesman looking at the at the net. I think they're close to satisfied. Ben Green having a look. Goalies are very particular about the. Uh, oh yeah! Don't touch my crease. <laughs> about the cage. All righty. Now we're set. Let's play some hockey here in Eugene. Leone and Lutz for the faceoff, and right off the outset, nearly a rush for Cal. Now going to go into the corner. Warren Berg chases that one down, looping around the 
zone is Cal, and then Armstrong separates puck and lays the body, but down go the Ducks, and chance for Cal to set up in front. Sloppy pass there. Lutz with the stick check there. Warren Berg going back behind the net. Berg and Armstrong, the opening deep pair from the Ducks. Two very different style defensemen as the Ducks iced the puck here, although it was actually Derek Armstrong, who you might say is more the defensive guy in that pair, who found the back of the night, back of the net yesterday, and Warren Berg, much more mobile, similar to what we see out of the couple of the Cal defenders, and Berg's going to be an important player tonight, I think, for the Ducks. Oh yeah, he's their, by far their most mobile defenseman. Like you said last night, Derek Armstrong really did a good job picking his spots last night when to infiltrate the blue line and step into the zone and join the rush and pretty interesting uh, Oregon coaches pairing up the two defensemen uh, together on this uh, so you call it top line for the Oregon Ducks. Big collision there was Nathan Lutz using his body. And Cal still almost a full minute or over a minute now of sustained offense for the Bears to start this game as that shot comes through the crease of Ben Green paddled away. Setting up to the blue line go the Bears. Dumping it in was Kevin Wang. Wang and Chen, that great top defensive unit for Cal and trying to Set the Bears up on the doorstep again. That play looked a little familiar. Yeah, Ducks and Chains are absolutely gassed right now. They're just standing around. Really need to get the puck out of the zone. Now Cal has come ready to play. Losing his stick there was Derek Armstrong. Jackson Howery, a little bit of physicality. And now into the corner again. Both teams looking pretty gassed. It's been a long shift. I don't think either team has had a real line change yet. We're two minutes into this game. I think Cal had one because of the off the icing, but... Uh, good call. They did. They did. Ducks starting to get a few line changes of their own the right now. But Estrada's group out there, but... The deep pairing's still out there. And half the forward line. Now Lutz into the bench. Loose in front, and... Derek Armstrong, who seemed to play about half the game yesterday, finally gets to that. Now here's Trevor's shot and had the puck on a string, but someone snapped the string from underneath him. Estrada, can he keep it alive? Just barely, but taking away Cal. 17-19 left first period. That shot sent wide by Chen. Want to say hello as well to any of the Cal parents, friends, and family watching us. As well as the Duck fans watching from around the globe. Into the corner. Estrada with the physical play towards Stangeland, trying to get his stick on the puck and find Chris Stankovic. Ducks still not able to clear. Now they do. And it's Adam Sussman with the puck. Sussman making a move. He shoots. He scores! 16.38 left in the first. Adam Sussman has put the Ducks up 1-0. Deja vu for the Ducks. First shot, first goal, just like last night. And this time it's Adam Sussman going top shelf, far side. Kind of pulling a Nathan Lutz from last night as well. Just off the rush and what a turn of events. Cal dominated the play for the past four minutes. Absolutely just keep the Ducks in their own zone and Sussman comes down and surprises Sammy Morris. And I think he wants to have that one back because Ducks now up taking the lead after getting badly outplayed. And we'll see how Cal responds to that. That can always light a fire under you as a team when you feel like you're the better team and you find yourself losing. And especially for Cal, it's, they would argue it's the second night in a row that they've had that happen. I think they'd like the end result last night, but lots of hockey left in this one after Sussman puts us up 1-0. I know the Oregon coaches are liking the scoreboard, but they're not liking too much how their defensive yeah, play not a is lot right of, now. Yeah, not a lot else to like from the Ducks. There's a collision, and all in good fun. And then Derek Armstrong with a little bit of a 
shoved back down on Varela after the play. Referees watch it, just let him play. Puck in front and good job to chop that away and get a bit of a desperation clearance on it, or not clearance, but sweeps it out of the crease anyway. Ducks spending way too much time in their own zone so far. Now though, they get a chance to just set up a breakout play from behind their own goal. Cal shades off a little bit and misplayed. Bears take it right back across the blue line they come. Shot, save, made green, kicked away and Ducks control the rebound with 15.05 left. In transition though, that pass not good enough. Warren Berg has to go backwards with it again. We talked about Berg's mobility and be a giveaway there and he gave it to the worst guy to give it to on the Bears. In the long run, no harm, no foul. Now here's Jackson Howry. Howry dumps it in and Howry and Galuli will give chase. Galuli's gonna get to that first try to dump it back for Jackson, but Shen recovers. Now it's Galuli centering. Lutz is there, but good job by Devin Cox of the Bears just to get his body in the way there and didn't let Lutz do anything with it. 14-25 left first period. The Ducks up 1-0 on the Adam Sussman goal. That yeah, Ducks looks like they're kind of getting into their own right now, but uh, if I were them, I'd try to put everything on net, kind of surprise Morsi, but he hasn't seen any action, so he's maybe feeling a little cold right now. That shot wide, there was an opportunity for the Bears for a passing play there. Couldn't make it happen. And the wraparound attempt, now they go with a, it was maybe a bit of a cage to shoot at there, and did that net cut off its moorings again, or did the puck go into the netting? I think the net came off its mooring, but good good shot block by Stengel in there, because uh, Berkeley defenseman Jeffrey Chen had uh, some room to go top shelf, and Stengel in there with a key, key shot block. Happy to see Sussman score. We had a chance to have a good talk with Adam's dad, David, before the game. And we know Phyllis is watching this in Chicagoland as well. And everyone else said, let us know where you're watching from. We've got players on this Ducks team from as far afield as Norway. And we always love to know where in the world our, our viewers are coming from. Powerful thing. And Bears fans as well. If you want to let us know where you're watching from as well, looking up and down. This Bears roster, a couple of Canadians on the team. Seoul, South Korea, Peter Shin of the Bears. Have we seen a number four out there for Cal? Uh, I'll have to look on the bench to see. We did, we did hear, we, we understand that there's a couple, at least a couple of players for Cal missing due to injury, so maybe he's not out there. Looks like Ben Green took off his mask and I think they need some repair on the net, looks like. There's a discussion going on right here. Yeah, they're going to call the for the uh, for the ice crew. So we're cueing the Jeopardy music with 13.57 left in the period. Find the ice tech. Sending teams to the benches. We got our difficulties figured out, but now we've got something on the ice. We were kind of joking about last night at the... Our theme song was. Looks like the, there's an issue with the net. They just yelled out to the uh, the rinkman here. They need another net. So I don't know if there's a hole in the back of that one or. There has to be. I, I know the refs were looking at it right before the game. So looks like. So we'll see if we can find out at the intermission why. I think this is actually uh, kind of good for the Ducks because they were really getting outplayed in their own defensive zone for the majority of this first period besides that one lone goal by Adam Sussman. So kind of a breakout momentum for Cal right now. Kind of fortunate for the Ducks. Be able to regroup, talk things over, remind the defensemen all their assignments and maybe try to get some sustained offensive pressure in the net comes in. So I, I can't see anything in looking at the net. But it's obvious. I think uh, it might have to do with the pegs. And yeah, because the net did seem, I don't know if that was the same net that we had on that same end yesterday, but it did seem like the net was prone to pop off its moorings a little bit more than usual yesterday. 
calling a day's work for a referee. And yeah, like you said, this is a free timeout for uh, our coaches Orr and Lim to figure out how to sustain this lead. Adam Sussman's goal, 322 of the first period, puts us where we are. The Ducks did take the lead, one nothing yesterday. So don't want to, uh, you don't want to write the story of the game just yet. Especially that second period where the majority of the goals came from both teams. So we'll see if that second period for today's game kind of lives up to the hype from yesterday. And hearing from the Galuli clan in Sacramento, California. All over the internet reaches. Now we're back. Net has been replaced. And faceoff won by Cal. They get a chance to get a shot through again. And save made by Ben Green. I think there was a rebound there, but he popped on it. Yeah, good possession by, uh, position by Green. A lot of traffic in front, able to smother that rebound. And no loose change for the Bears. So another faceoff and another faceoff win for Cal comes back to Chen at the point, and then the Bears will cycle it around. They go back to Chen, but sloppy pass gets by him, and now Sammy Morse is going to have to play it. Chance for uh, for the Ducks if they can bounce up on the puck, rather pounce on it is what we were going for, but unable to, and the Bears take over. And Redwood City, California. As well, 13 and 20 left. Puck glued to the near side boards before Cal can eventually clear it out. Now behind the net, Warren Berg. Derek Armstrong for the Ducks and good flip pass from Armstrong, but intercepted by Cal just on the wrong side of the blue line, so they end up offside. 13.05 left. Yeah, Cal has such an active defense, especially on that last offensive shift that they had. They were almost running it like a power play, running everything to the perimeter, but now that the Leone line is out, I think what I've been seeing is they like to cycle it below the goal line where Leone's on his sort of a strong side, uh, just left to Ben Green. So let's, let's see if they kind of stick to their game plan on this shift. And the Ducks have got to focus defensively with five and blue out there. We also see the second line for the Ducks, so it looks like that matchup's going to be sticking next to the, uh, the Leone line for the rest of the game. You know, Leone almost shading at the point, almost like a defenseman there. That's not unlike a power play either, have your best offensive player at the point. Now here comes Nathan Lutz starting and stopping and sent Leone the wrong way. Then he dumps it behind the net for Kiernan Galuni. Galuli. Another fun one to say. And now Cal breaking out through the neutral zone and couldn't get around towards Stangeland, the Norwegian. 12.03 left in this period. The Ducks leading 1-0 on the Adam Sussman goal of 3 minutes 22 seconds. But here's Leone with the shot and wide. And that's, I think the Ducks would prefer that Leone's shots look like that compared to the positions he was getting him in yesterday. Yeah, Ben Green saw that one all the way. Good position, but prime real estate for Leone right in the slot. Ducks don't want to see that again. And now Nick Jones, Peyton Barkley, Chris Maddox. This is an important uh, important shift anytime you get that third unit out there. Want to make sure that they, they're able to keep that pressure on, keep that momentum up. And, you know, especially when you only really work with, with three full lines instead of four, you got to be able to ice them all and so far, we've seen a lot of improvement out of guys like Chris this year. Here come the Bears, though, again. The shot knocked away by Green. Goes behind the net. Armstrong trying to use his body. Worked that one for Warren Berg, and he does. And a chance for Warren Berg to move out. Now finds Barkley. And Barkley will gain the red line and dump. And the Ducks go for a line change. Good shift from the third unit. There's 10 minutes, 50 seconds left in the first period. 
Yeah, always a uh, great shift by the third unit. And that's good when the uh, coach puts out the first line defense out there to help them out, uh, make sure they have a clean exit out of their defensive zone and grind on the Bears and, and the Ducks' own zone. And Stankovic will knock that one forward now. 10.30 left first period. Chance for Trevor Schott if he can take it away to find Stanky. He does. Rebounds there and Stankovic or uh, Schott couldn't handle it. Big opportunity missed for the Ducks there. That happened so fast though. Much easier said than done as the Bears go offside. Yeah. Ducks, especially Schott, almost capitalized on a turnover right in front of the Cal goalie. And in fact, they're going to call, I think, an intentional offside here because the faceoff's on the other side of the neutral zone. And that's fortunate for the Ducks because Cal is coming on a two-on-one led by their other dynamics duo, Delfina Varlea. Well, it's just as many points as Leone, but Leone's taken the spotlight of the last night in this game. Yeah, easy for us to focus on one guy when he scores a five spot <laughs> as he did last night or we think it was five. It may even have been six. It got a little bit hard to keep track. Into the corner they go. Galuli. Galuli trying to center for Lutz. Howery taps it back to Galuli. Galuli. Another good old little tip pass from Jackson Howery there. We saw that yesterday as well. Chance on the wraparound. Puck is loose and bouncing and just chopped towards goal by the Ducks. A little bit of better pressure on this shift than we've seen, but it squirts out of the zone back through the neutral zone. Armstrong trying to find Nathan Lutz, and now Lutz will turn around and dump it back. Armstrong into the corner. Good communication there and good exchange between Lutz and Armstrong. Now behind the net for Nathan Lutz. Four in yellow is Lutz. And the Bears will come away with that puck. That one's in fact, I don't know if that went through the netting or just behind it, but it's out of play. 9.08 left, the puck leaving the vicinity of the rink. Yeah, Ducks had some really good sustained offense. That pass shift, able to cycle it down low and create a few opportunities. And that's what the Ducks want to see more of, get some more sustained pressure, not just everything coming off the rush. And there's another opportunity for that third unit out there. Chris Maddox on Varela. That's a, uh, it's a tough matchup and a good early stick check from Maddox there. But now here comes Varela across the blue line. Shot wide. Rebounds there. And now Barkley tips it forward. Played by Cal in the neutral zone. Sussman going for the hit there. He had the target locking sound going on in his mind. 8.36. First period, Cal setting up behind the goal. Always going to make you nervous if you're behind the bench for the Ducks there. And Sussman wraps that one around for Jones. Can Jones get there and launch it up ice? He can, but Barkley couldn't handle it. Turns it around. Now Chen fires a shot. Blocker it away. 8-19 left first period. Bears trying to get another shot on, and Ben Green on top of it. 8-11 left, and both teams going to get a new set out. Kind of a bend-not-break mentality for the Ducks right now because Cal's have definitely winning the time of possession, but Ducks D doing a good job kind of forcing them to the outside, not challenging Ben Green too, too much, and clearing out the front of the crease, having him see every shot come in. And again, Cal sets up behind the goal. That was Leone in his office there trying to best Ben Green, not this time. Armstrong working on him, and then Leone will go and try to get to the top of the circle. That puck hits something metal. Armstrong laying the body, but Cal comes away with the puck. Trevor Schott's group out there. And nice time for Seth Howe, number 24. I don't think we called his name at all yesterday. Uh, one of the newer players on this Ducks team. At a Mount View somewhere. The state not listed on the Duck roster. We'll find out where. And Ben Green puts the glove down on top of that one. It was sliding across his crease. That good movement by Ben Green to slide over and get a pad on that puck. Seven minutes left. 
in the first. Ducks still hemmed in their own zone. Gonna try to wait to try to find a way to transition through the neutral zone, get in the offensive zone. It starts with this faceoff right here. Ben's being made to do a lot of work in this first period. So far, he's been equal to the task, but that kind of becomes a critical mass for goaltenders at some point when if you're making that many saves, it's not really a good thing. Another opportunity for the Bears. Sussman chops at it, and <laughs> Noah Rosenberg, I think, just made a glove save on the bench. Trying to pat his stats off the bench. It doesn't, it doesn't count, <laughs> Noah, but I'm sure the trainer will appreciate it because that was going straight for, straight for their head. I don't know if he actually got that puck, but it looked like it from here, so we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. 6.52 left in the period. It's been a lot of time in that duck zone. Cal just dominating time of possession, but the Ducks with the one nothing lead on the score and go to that Corsi and the Fenwick and the advancing stats all you like. The only one that matters is the score at the end of the game and right now that's in the Ducks' favor. Lutz tried to chip that one forward, couldn't get it by Varela and the Bears once again into the duck zone. Shot again and centered and Cal really likes that centering play. They score. They sent Green moving the wrong way and had a lot of cage to shoot at once they did. I think that was the Cal defenseman number eight. Jeffrey Chen was able to get possession of the puck and you outweighed Ben Green and there is so much traffic in front. Two Ducks defensemen, two to three Cal forwards in there. And he had a wide, like you said, a wide open case to shoot at him. But Ben Green can't see it. He can't really do much about that one. But A really, really patient play from Chen there. And now here come the Bears again. Trying to open the floodgates is Cal. Now they throw it on goal again, looking for the deflection that time. Leone throwing it on goal. 5.50 left first period. 1-1 one, one your score. And call it 2-1 as Cal scoring back-to-back -back in just a couple of moments. Yeah, there's a loose puck right behind the net. Leone, right place at the right time, just scooped it up tucked it right behind Ben Green. Ben Green was leaning on his uh, his right side, but couldn't get uh, quite not fast enough over to the other post. But regardless, it's a 2-1 lead for Bears. Five minutes, 30 seconds left in the first. You know, we probably said Leone in the right place at the right time a hundred times yesterday. <laughs> he's just, a, he's a smart player. He works smarter than he does hard and the Bears add another one. That was number 13, Steve Bagley off of a really good play by Leone right behind the net. Stick lifted the Ducks defenseman. Leva Stanglin right behind the net and just f sauced it right in front for Bagley to tuck it home. And just like that, now it's a 3-1 lead for Cowell in a span of only 20 seconds since the last goal. Yeah, and that, I mean, that, that's a breakdown. That, that can't happen. That, you hope that that's not going to uh, eat into the duck momentum too much. They were already having a difficult enough time getting established puck possession. The Ducks look good in the offensive zone, just the defensive zone. They just got to find a way to transition out of and have the forwards help their defense to make life a little bit easier. 5.07 left in the period. Stankovic knocks that one forward and offside. Duck bench made sure that one was going to get called. Five minutes exactly. So the mentality for the Ducks now is just try to get one back with five minutes left. That's going to be huge for them going into the locker room. And they win the face off. No, they, they lose it. Armstrong chases that one down. But still behind the net now. Can the Ducks finally get out of the zone just barely before Cal takes it away? And Galuli throws a good check there. But the Bears taking it away again. 
It's Chen for Cal. Chen all the way behind the net. Now moved off the puck, but he's going to be the first one to it after. And the Bears just dominating puck possession inside the uh, Oregon zone. Wraparound attempt off the pad and loose again. Cal's going to jump onto it so quick, so responsive to the puck as this Cal team as it goes wide there on the shot. Like I said, Cal's offense revolves entirely from behind the net, so I think the Ducks D's got to kind of come back a little bit, put some more pressure along that board play, but Cal's defense, led by Chen and Wang, they're all over the Ducks whenever they have the puck right behind the net because they come down right in the slot and they act like two extra forwards. Into the corner it goes. Suspin and Stankovic there. And cross ice pass from the Ducks. Now it gets up to Trevor Schott and you'll always go to the edge of your sheet when that happens. Shot to Estrada and Estrada's pass to the middle looking for Stankovic, not able to be collected. Now Trevor Schott behind the goal. Shot Estrada's there, so was Stankovic and Trevor tried to find Chris on that one. Has to be sent to the neutral zone by Cal and then they'll take it away across the blue line. They've gained the zone, the shot knocked away green. 3.13 left. Estrada flipping that forward, trying to find Stankovic, hit him in the shin, couldn't control it and hit thrown there. Rebound there, another two good saves in a row by Ben Green, and a third desperation one. How about that from 33? Those were two insane saves by Ben Green. I mean, I think I'm a bigger fan of the third one where he just the threw the paddle. paddle out to clear it, and now a penalty coming up. I think it might be coincidental. Looks like that's Trevor's shot and number 19, Darian Oliver. I think they're hacking away at each other, but well, like, like you said, that three big saves, my mistake by Ben Green. Won the initial save, the rebound, and then leaned back on the paddle. So it looks like we're gonna see some four on four hockey, and I think the Ducks are gonna be uh, gonna try to take advantage of this with a little bit more open ice to try to weave in and out. And The open ice you'd like, but the player you'd like out there in a four on four most for the Ducks is the one unavailable sitting in the penalty box to our left. But other good skaters on this Ducks team, we know Nathan Lutz can dance out there. We've seen Sussman move well with the puck. Ducks have to get possession first. Cal's been much better at that. And Varela with it. Varela's shot high and wide. And now a chance for the Ducks. Here's Kiernan Galuli. Chance for a two-on-one for the Ducks. Galuli gonna shoot! And the save from Sammy Morris. I think the shot, the right call there. The trailer a little bit delayed on giving Galuli a real passing option. Yeah, Galuli shaking his head on that one. I think if he had that one back, might have gone low off the pad because he had two guys, two Ducks coming the other way with him. The face-off coming up. Two minutes, 11 seconds left. A buck 33 four on, on the four on four as the Ducks will win this face-off. Warren Berg setting up work, shows a shot. High bounce off the boards. Ducks collecting it. Now Jackson Howry. Howry taking his time and still with the puck. Now rung into the boards. And Cal takes it away. Jeremy Chen, but taken right back Stankovic and then right back by Chen again. Now it's the Bears in transition. Offside. Cal has looked really, really good in transition. They've gone offside about three or four times now, but that's one of the areas where they're really beating this Ducks team is just immediately able to turn attack into defense into attack and then denying the Ducks the ability to do the same thing, and that's kind of your difference right now at 3-1. Yeah, if it's not one of the forwards bringing the puck up, it's one of their def uh, defensemen with Chen, Wang, and Thompson, all really good skaters for Cal, and they really break it out really efficiently. If it's, like I said, if it's not one of the defenders, it's not one of the forwards, they just chip it out like an alley-oop pass from their own red line all the way to the blue line. 
A minute 30 left in the first period. 48 seconds left now on the matching minors. I think they were both just called as unsportsmanlike from the call I saw. Pass across the zone there and Cal couldn't handle it. Sussman behind the net. Knocks it back towards Stangeland and Lutz. High bounce and out of play. 1.01 left in period number one. 24 seconds left in the matching minors. Ninety-five and nineteen. It's Trevor's shot, and Darian Oliver sitting in the boxes currently. Varela now loads of space for Varela, using every inch of space out there on the four-on-four. Four. It comes back to him, and he shoots wide. Good initial save from Ben Green on that play on the long pass there. Too long for the Ducks to be able to handle it. And Trevor Schott's going to get called for another penalty here. Interference. He got, it looked like he, his man skated right into him. I didn't, I didn't quite see the calls looking on the it, offensive zone. And all I saw a shot They both, in. right out of the box, it was the guy that, that skated into Trevor Schott was, was Darian Oliver coming out of the penalty box. They both, you know, were skating right toward that blue line, and it wasn't really a natural spot for either of them to be skating into, quite frankly. They'd be crossing to go to the benches there, and they're going to say that there was uh, enough intent there from Shot that they're going to yeah, they're going to really, give him two minutes. That's unfortunate. Yeah, because Shot had the puck coming the other way. It's a good opportunity. A couple offensive opportunities Ducks haven't had this period. In front and deflected away. 12 seconds left in the period. 3-1 still the score with Cal leading. They've scored the last three goals after the Ducks took a 1-0 lead. And 3-2-1 and 0. That's going to do it for the first period of play. We will take a quick break. Don't you go anywhere. I went this way.
and back for the second period. The shots in that first period, and this almost seems closer than it looked, was 14 to four in favor of Cal. The Ducks just not able to get sustained zone time and not able to test Sammy Morris too much. One or two changes you'd like to see for the Ducks to, to counteract that? Well, I think they're still doing a good job kind of containing somewhat of Leone. I mean, he didn't have a hat trick in the first period like last game, so I guess that's sort of a positive. But definitely shore up the defensive play, especially just better communication with the forwards and the defensemen. Just do everything they can to get out of their zone efficiently. Quick puck movement, D to D passes, uh, anything just to get the puck out of the zone and then transit into the offensive zone. Because we were saying that their offense looks good when they do have the puck. When they have the puck, they can get shots on net, they can get those rebounds, they can get those scoring opportunities. So just that communication from d defense to forwards is uh, going to be key. But Ducks uh, shorthand to start off this this second period with a minute 31 left on shots minor penalty. That was that interference call that a little bit of a hard luck call went against Trevor's shot right as he got out of the penalty box from his first penalty. But an immediate clearance from the Ducks to begin this shorthanded opportunity to start the second period. 3-1 the score. Cal goals came from Chen, Leone, and Bagley, although good old number five was involved in each one of those plays. And Buck's goal was Adam Sussman. Now it's the first time where the Bears are setting up in the formation of their power play in this second period, and Armstrong trying to get to that one, pokes it forward, but not out of the zone. The Bears control again. 50 seconds left on the shot minor. Setting up behind the net, Cal loves to do that, and it's made life very difficult for Oregon defensively so far through the first game and a half as that shot is through on Ben Green, but he pounces on it to make the save. 35 ticks left in Trevor Schott's penalty. 55 seconds gone in this second period. Yeah, Varleo was able to walk in a little bit on that shot, and Ben Green was able to see at the last second and get right in the way of that. And Sort of a rebound on that shot, but was able to clear it in under 30 seconds left in this minor penalty to shot. So here comes Chen again across the blue line. Just lots of skating as Chen sends Chris Maddox going the wrong way. 10 seconds left in the power play. Maybe one more opportunity. There's Leone was on the doorstep, nearly had another tap in, but the pass disrupted on its way to him, and now Trevor shots out of the box. He's already lasted longer than he did the last time he exited the box. That last penalty was back-to-back. 18-18 -back. left in this period as the Ducks successfully kill off the carryover power play time left on that minor. Behind the goal, setting up his Cal, and that one deflects loose, and it's Cal's pass that sends it back toward their own goal, so no ice as the Bears set up in the Cal zone. And Berkeley just able to break through into the neutral zone. Here's Chen again, so active on the puck number eight. And point shot thrown there by Kevin Wang. Estrada flips it through and Stankovic is going to chase it and Stankovic was in front of his man there. And for hybrid icing, it's the first to that face-off dot and everyone was up in arms because Stankovic was He was leading the race. Man. That's... You know, that's a tough call to make. Hybrid icing sort of a weird rule, but that one's inexplicable. And you could hear, you could hear Stanky as soon as the whistle goes say, I beat him. But referees, linesmen not interested. And not uncommon for them to say, I, for one linesman to overrule the other and say, you got that one wrong and send the face off to the neutral zone instead. But 
not that time. And for the Ducks, all the trouble they've had establishing possession so far in this game, they're going to feel really hard done by that. Here's Armstrong in his own zone, taken away from him by Cal, and now shot poked it away again. But it comes right back for Cal. Here's Trevor Schott starting behind his own net. Beats one guy, look out. Here comes Trevor across the blue line now and just too many bodies in the center of the ice for Trevor to be able to do anything there. But now behind the net, it's the Ducks trying to set up. Cal takes it away. And that one rang off of something it wasn't supposed to hit. And we'll have a stoppage in play with 16.41 left in period number two. This is an important face-off coming up for the Ducks, sending their second unit out there. All they want to do on this one, just like you said, regain offensive possession. And looks like the Ducks bench is up in arms. Well, yeah, I mean, Cal's taken forever on, on this exchange. I think that's kind of in response to Shock. A shot really took his time on that icing call. So Cal kind of doing the same. So the ref throws out the centerman as a little bit of punishment. And there's Sussman now. Behind the net, it's Cal in their own zone now trying to move out, but Galuli did a good job. Got there first, but Ducks just cannot establish puck possession as Cal shoots that one down, no icing. Sussman trying to dig it out, gets possession, but taken right back. Now bouncing in the middle of the ice, and it may come for the Bears again. It does, and the shot goes over the cage. That was Leone right in front, who you do not want to see two feet in front of your goaltender. How are we going for the hit there, and offside they go. I think Duck's getting a little frustrated right now, not really making those easy tape-to-tape -tape passes. Kind of upping the physicality a little bit, kind of taking their frustration out on the Bears players. And you know, you want to see, you want to see emotion, you want to see intensity, but I think you're right. It's almost to a point where it's getting a little distracting for the Ducks. And that was something they did really well last night was move the puck by passing. That one will come right to the middle, and Peyton Barkley nearly had a shot, so the third unit trying to lead from the back of the pack there. Shot from Cal off the post. Chris Maddox tries to clear that one, and Ben Green gloves that one softly out of the air. 15-23 left period. Two, three ones, still your score. More of the same so far, second period. Yeah, some ways to kind of improve your puck possession is not trying to get those home run passes or always trying to go those kind of 30 to 45 feet passes. You just want to kind of be close to your defensemen so they can just break it out nice and easy. Here's Stangeland up trying to find Stankovic and shot and deflected in the neutral zone and now taken by Cal in their own zone, so no icing. But Cal's got those long passes when they want them, and one of them right there sets him up on a rush. The shot, though, never was going to challenge Green. Now behind the net, it's Cal trying to figure out something that may challenge Ben Green. Leone just trying to find some space. Throws it on the goal there, and in front of net, there was an opportunity for Chase Swerdlick. Thomas Estrada chasing down Wang. And here come the Bears. Now back up to the point as Cal sets it up again in that shot. Hit, I think it was the side of the net. I don't think that was actual post. 14-19 shot through wide. Comes around for Leone to collect it. Leone centering, shot point blank. Cal scores on the rebound. Yeah, no defenseman in front. I believe that might have been... 14 Chase Swerdlick right in front. No one, not a duck jersey near him. And nothing Ben Green could have done about that one. One foot in front. 
was able to capitalize on his own shot and tuck it home for a 4-1 Berkeley lead. So we'll call it Sword Lick it. 548 of period number two. But we'll probably get the official call coming up soon. They've been announcing the goals for tonight's game. Long pass. Varela was causing danger there, but in the end, it'll come back to the neutral zone, and then Varela flips it again, and a little trouble for Ben Green, but able to clear it away. 1340 left in the period. Arkley goes down trying to move Jordan Thompson off the puck and Thompson will go backwards with it in his own zone. Now here he comes across the blue line getting around Jackson Howery across the other blue line. And rung off the boards. Varela throws it in looking for a deflection from Duncan Cadeau in front. And now it's Howry. Howry, good pass forward. Opportunity, Galuli and Lutz are out there. Shot, knocking it down and still loose somewhere in front. Backhanded toward goal, still it's loose in front. Referee right there, saw the puck the whole time, never blew it dead, and the Ducks have to go back to the neutral zone. Lauren Berg collects the puck, but couldn't keep the Ducks on side. It's like offsides the call. Some a lot of havoc in front of the Berkeley net. Sammy Morse was there, the goaltender to didn't know where the puck was at times. It was up and over the net, in front of the net. It came out to the point to Armstrong. But finally some good Ducks pressure after a long time spending time in their own zone. Yeah, it was their, seems like it was their first real attack since the Sussman goal. And rough to have nothing to show for it, but anything that can build momentum, that's going to be good for the Ducks. Berg going into the corner. Thompson there. And now the Ducks again. Trevor Schott, Chris Stankovic out there. They've played together for just a few years. And Stanky threw that one on goal, but it was knocked wide and behind the cage. 11.55, left a slapper from Varela and top of the circle and Hornberg is very upset with a member of the Berkeley Bears. Ben Green flashing some leather there. With Leone trying to go top shelf, but Green says no. You get the sense there, you get the sense there is a non-zero chance of a fight tonight. Don't see it too often because it does tend to cost you a game at this level, but wouldn't be the first time and there's been some uh, been some extracurriculars the last 24 hours. Yeah, Ducks just overly frustrated with themselves with their defensive play so far and well, all that can change with the few turnovers and shots on goal and maybe even a power play. Chris Maddox throwing the body there. Cal still with it in the neutral zone and Cal in possession has been the story of this game. Dominating time of possession with 11.34 left in the second period, just about the halfway mark of this game. Yeah, we might see some possible lineup changes, seeing some activity going on on the bench. Maybe Coach Orland just want to find any kind of spark or combination that can create any kind of offense. Here's Maddox on goal and rebound. Can it be kept alive by Stangs on the can in front? Barkley shoots, rebound still there. Now the whistle from the referee and Stangelin throwing his arms up in frustration. I think that was the classic referee maybe lost sight of it because Torrid seemed like he still saw the puck. But as we said last night when the Ducks were the beneficiary 
Hockey gods giveth and they taketh away on that one. Yeah, but it was just an innocent shot by Maddox from the face-off dot. And if you ever don't, if you don't have a play in the offensive zone, just throw it on net and yeah. rebound like that is spewed out, and that created another maybe one or two more shots on net. So. When in doubt, just throw it on the. That's what the coaches it's want to never, see. Never, never a bad thing to throw it on goal. Behind the net, Lutz and Howry trying to get there. Trevor shots out there playing with them, and spinning around was Trevor and Puck just not quite able to be sent on goal. Howry now for shot behind the net, taken away by Cal, and now the Bears on the breakout. Here's Leone. Leone with the shot saved green and again that's where you want Michael Leone shooting from not five feet away with an empty cage yeah and coach Orr and Lim already shuffled up the lines a little bit that time we saw Lutz with shot and Jackson Howery out there now we're gonna see Estrada Galuli Stankovic though Stankovic other forward there and Pris by the way was a uh, in his previous incarnation as an Oregon player he's a grad student you see so he's been on this been with this program for a while but he was a defenseman in his past life and playing a little bit of forward here you just you do what you can to fill the fill the positions that need filling One run around the boards. Estrada trying to get there, gets himself back on side and then dumps it in. Stankovic and Galuli chasing it. And across the blue line comes Cal, backhanding it well, well wide of the cage. Was Cadeau, 15. And Estrada trying to get it up ice for Galuli. Took a bad bounce, but came right back to Kiernan anyway. 10 minutes, so exactly halfway through this game. It's a 4-1 to one score with Cal leading. Deflected, so no ice there. Warren Berg has to collect it with pressure in the corner and then goes to the opposite corner for Derek Armstrong. Armstrong now sends it up ice off the skate of a Cal bear. So now it's no ice the other way. Galuli and uh, I think it was Stankovic the other giving some pressure there. Uh, Barkley, excuse me. Now a shot from Cal off the post and whistle goes as a couple of players tangled up inside the net. Yeah, even when the Ducks want to dump it in, the Cal defensemen are just all over the puck. So I think the Ducks got to be a little bit more uh, particular where they're dumping in the puck. It has to be in areas where the Cal defensemen are not, that they have to go and chase it, and it's just not directly to them. It's tough, but you can't carry, you can't dump it in. You know, there's two opposite ends of the spectrum there, and, and Cal's really controlling both of them. What do you do if you're this Oregon Ducks team? Well, if I was after a shot on right there, right yeah, there. now the, the net's off its moorings. Go ahead, we got a chance. Well, if I was a Ducks defenseman, I would just try to make sure the forwards are, like I said before, kind of a little bit closer to them so they make those easier passes. And instead of kind of dumping or carrying it in, you kind of want to chip it past the, the, the Cal defenseman so that they're on their toes. They have to transition, turn around behind, skate backwards. I think that's where the puck position really begins. That's what Cal's doing a good job of to the Oregon Ducks. So Oregon just got to kind of mimic Cal's breakout a little bit so they can try to get some shots on goal. The Cal team split with Arizona State, swept Washington State, swept Washington. So you may be looking at a uh, potential Pac-8 title team. We'll see. The other team that we thought preseason was going to be in that role, Arizona State, comes to Eugene next week, and we'll have both of those games for you here. After that, the Ducks head to Seattle, the first of four this year against Washington. The I-5 Cup. And the Ducks would love to get that trophy back in their room. May even take that over a conference title. 8.24 left in this second period. Chipped and look out in the scorer's booth. 
Puck comes in there quick. I hit in the hand by a puck in there once. Not uh it smarts. Kinda hurts a little bit. <laughs> had my I was running the score clock that day, so I had my my palm out and right on the top of the hand and was shaking that out for about the next ten minutes of the period. The uh the duck bench thought it was really funny. <laughs> I didn't think it was quite as funny as they did. Eight oh five left in the second period. Well, we are a little bit higher up now, so... Yes, we're a little safer. <laughs> Although, boys, please, if you break the equipment, you buy it. We say it every year, but it's it's literally not a joke. I, I can't... <laughs> we don't have replacements. Maybe a little bit. Peyton Barkley forward to Derek Armstrong. Nick Jones out there, and they're offside. Game of inches and half an inch offside. That was a great little pass. They the just a bit. Saw Armstrong and I believe that was Maddox on the other side. Or no, sorry, Nick Jones on the other side. And besides the offside call, that was a great awareness by the Ducks defenseman to spring two forwards on the break. Behind the Bears goal. They start up ice again. And now offside the other side of the neutral zone against the other team. Yeah, Cal's been called for offside quite a lot this game. Even though they've been dominating the possession game, they, it could have been a lot more if probably half of those uh, offside calls were onside. Of course, they tend to be winning the faceoff, so it doesn't matter too much, but point taken and the Bears have really been carrying across the, the zone a lot and that's going to make you a little more prone to go offside. Real battle for the puck in the corner there. Batted forward and knocked down. Hand pass calls from the Ducks bench but nothing doing from the officials. Yeah, I think the refs probably thought the Ducks probably got a touch on that. But they play on. Shot through and Saved by Green. Good job from Green to see that through traffic. Then trying to find Darian Oliver on the doorstep for the Bears, but it went wide by him. Here's Kiernan Galuli. Offside. That hurts for the Ducks. Really hurts. Trying to get anything going they can, and it can be a real backbreaker. Speaking of getting things going, here comes the first offensive and defensive unit for the Ducks. New line of shot, Lutz, and Stankovic. Trying to generate any kind of offense to try to get one back. Now knocked down by Cal. Here's Leone. Leone trying to drop pass, but taken away. Stankovic, and then Stankovic looking for the cross ice pass himself for Lutz, but telegraphed it a bit too much and it's taken away. 6.18 left in the period, 4-1 your score. And Trevor shot on the puck. Shot trying to get around Michael Leone. Leone doing work with his stick defensively and now Captain takes shot Captain down. Tackle. And tackle, probably the right word for what that was. But nothing interesting enough for the referee to take action. Here's Leone. Leone with another pass and another good opportunity for Cal. Derek Armstrong turns himself around. Ducks trying to move out and just too far in front of Stankovic. He's got to chase it. That's probably the most physical shift for Berkeley this game. I think with a 3-1 lead, they're kind of taking some liberties and really attacking the Ducks first line physically rather than trying to take it away, just taking the body. Yeah, and that's not really the Bears' game so much, taking the body, but yeah, it's just, working. Just going throughout their lineup, they only have a few guys that are six foot and above, but the rest are 5'10 to 5'11, whereas the Ducks have a little bit more size in that category. So, not yeah, like you said, not really in the Bears' game is physicality. Shot blocked there, goes to the corner. There's a hit from Jackson Howery. That's something you don't see all, every day. Jackson Howery throwing a big hit. No, I think it's uh, 
It's something Jackson would probably like to do five or six times a game, though. He's a little, uh, he's an intense little one. 5.05 .05 left in the second period. How are we going there again into the corner now towards Stangeland. Stangeland ends up on his backhand. Pucks loose in front. The referee blows the whistle. It's underneath Sammy Morse. Well, it's a good sign that when the Ducks do get it into the zone, it's just no nonsense. They have to just have to throw everything on net. Don't want to make an extra pass because each time in possession where they are in the offensive zone, you don't know when the next time you're going to get back there for the Ducks, especially in this game. So after a faceoff, looks like Coach Orr and Lim are going back to their first unit, which is a prime area to try to get some scoring opportunities. So 451 left in this period. The Ducks would love to get one goal back before they go into the third. Here's Trevor Schott on the puck. Schott, Stankovic in the middle, but taken away by the Bears once more. Armstrong there and perhaps a little bit of miscommunication with Barkley and Green, but in the end, taken away. Rebound there, what a save on the rebound. Sammy Morris just took Nathan Lutz's lunch money. Yeah, Stankovic coming down, trying to go far side. And Lutz right there, awesome, awesome save by Morris. It was a really good play from the Ducks, though. It was, you were, you were calling for it earlier, you know, shoot, put it on goal, shoot for the rebound, and Lutz was in the right spot. Morris just made an incredible save. Here comes the Ducks' fourth line, trying to do any kind of energy momentum, because Ducks look like they got a little bit more life out there right now. Peyton Barkley finds the puck, throws it on goal. Chris Maddox she tried to, uh, I don't know quite what that was, but Maddox found himself in a good position. Yeah, fourth line putting in some work Maddox right now. Maddox hit hard, stays on his feet. Derek Armstrong throwing on goal. High shot there. There was a deflection to be had, but really tough play. Now it's Varela. Varela one-on-one with Armstrong. Sussman coming back for the Ducks to help. Great play. And by taken Armstrong. away. Now Derek Armstrong. Armstrong with Estrada. Estrada going to the center of the cage. Armstrong will stop and go to the corner and forgot to make a move. Ducks not able to get anything going that possession. Just maybe a little too hesitant. Dumped in. Sussman will go to get that one. 3.03 left. Second period. Yeah, Ducks looks like they got have a little bit more legs into them right now after two pretty good shifts by them. Keeping the puck away from Cal. Trying to generate anything off this rush. And here's Galuli. Galuli, Armstrong, and Lutz Estrada out there as well. Uh, excuse me, that was Howie, not Lutz. And shot towards green, but didn't get there. Blocked on its way. Loose in front again. Slap shot there, and just trying to slam home the rebound was Leone, but sends it wide that time. 2.10 left in the period. 4-1, still the score. It's only Chase Swerdlick's goal in this period so far after a 3-1 Bears lead at the end of the first. Tried to find Cadeau there too wide, but Bears will throw the one across ice again. Now Leone behind the goal. Loose in front, backhanded wide, and 142 left. That one's going to be icing when it crosses the red line, as it does right now with 138 left in this period. So no change for the Ducks. The Bears free to change, and they do. Not a bad group to have stuck out there for the Ducks. I think Shot just tried to sneakily get out there, but the ref said no way. <laughs> if, I, if I had a dollar, Brent, for every time I've seen that tried and succeed at the ACHA level, uh, we wouldn't have broadcast technical issues. <laughs> it's uh, the oldest trick in the ACHA book. 125 left and in the penalty. period, and that one's going to go against the Bears, isn't it? Yep, that's a tripping call, and I think the number yep. looks like... 
16. William Song with the trip right behind the net. And what a big opportunity for the Ducks to cut the lead in half with a power play with a minute 20 left in the second. Be a huge momentum shifter going into the third if they can pot one home. Power play looked good yesterday. I believe they had two power play goals and they were really clicking. And the Bears is even a step further from what Shot just tried to do. The Bears just tried to sneak a fifth guy out there. Well, maybe miscommunication, but we'll go with the more nefarious explanation. Remember that Generals game, a Generals player went on to the ice the second the faceoff was won on a penalty Yeah, kill. that was strange. That, that was, was a new one. That was the funniest thing I think I've seen in a game so far. Stankovic. Up for Trevor Schott. Shot across the blue line to Stangeland. Excuse me, Berg. Now into the corner again. Coming for Trevor Schott. If it settles for him, he can take a shot, but it didn't. Oh, great pass. There they score Nathan Lutz with the power play goal 42 seconds left in the frame look at that between the lakes pass by Stankovic all the way to Lutz that was a really pretty passing play probably assist for Stankovic of the year for him and like I said now we cut the lead in half what a great momentum shifter for the Ducks able to pot one home and the power play has been playing really really well tonight and last night so that's always going to be a check Mar in the coach's book for having their power play be successful. 42 seconds left in the period. Ducks trying to at least keep it where it is. Maybe even steal one more, but they got to get good zone time before that happens. Berg sees that one go past him, has to chase it. And here comes Warren Berg. Centering again, loose in front again, and chance. The Ducks nearly had it there. Now 10 seconds left, look out. Plenty of time for Cal. The shot deflected, loose, five seconds left. Trying to find Trevor shot, deflected. That'll do it in one second and zero as we've come to the conclusion of the second period. That was a fantastic defensive play by Derek Armstrong. Basically a one on four and able to disrupt it and get the puck out of the zone with no kind of shot on goal for Warren, uh, Warren uh, I'm sorry, Ben Green. But Derek Armstrong, the law student in his second year with the team and he's really becoming a key point of this defense so far in this season. Well, it's four to two at the end of the second period. We will take a quick break and we will be back with you at the beginning of period number three.
all set for the third period. Brent, you and I were talking about it with uh, with Sammy in the intermission. That second goal for the Ducks is huge going into this third period. Oh yeah, it was such a momentum shifter for the Ducks. Just cutting the lead in half after being pretty badly outplayed for the majority of the first and second period. But this is a brand new hockey game, in my opinion, for this third period swing. It's got to get pucks in deep, just grind on that Cal defense, and just try to get any, just throw it. When you have the puck on the offensive zone, just throw it on net, because anything could happen in this game. We saw a couple of big swings in scoring yesterday, so a two-goal deficit is, uh, is nothing for what we've seen from this series, but the Ducks are going to have to improve in puck possession. They're doing pretty good when they do get the puck into the Cal zone, but the neutral zone has been a really difficult place for the Ducks to live tonight, and the same with their own zone. They've been having a really hard time starting those offensive possessions. Yeah, also, I think I want to see from the Ducks to see how their lineups going to change throughout this game. They actually got a lot of good offensive pressure when they kind of made that big line of Lutz, Shaw, and Stankovic. And it was Stankovic two Shaw on that power play between the legs assist. So it looks like we might start off with that first unit that I was just mentioning of Stankovic, Shaw, and Lutz. So they've had good opportunities in the second period. Let's see if that'll carry over in the third period. 20 minutes on the clock and a couple of logistical issues being sorted out. Now it looks like we're set. Referee checks with the timekeeper and digging in for the faceoff. We're underway. Back for Warren Berg. Lutz chipping at it now and Take out the shovels. Trevor Shot trying to get through the forest himself there. Lutz trying to tap it forward. Cal, though, with the puck in their own zone. Jordan Thompson. And now finally Thompson throws it up ice too far and icing waved off there. Armstrong got too close. Berg, good foot drop to flip it back to Trevor Schott. He'll go dancing and still Trevor Schott the draws the play. penalty and shot from Trevor. That's always a tough one to say. Is deflected up into the netting with 19-16 left in the period and another Oregon power play. Yeah, you can't ask for a better start to this period because Oregon did a fantastic job on the four check creating a turnover and, was, and Cal's defense almost had a potential icing so forcing that was great and then even better sending the Ducks to the power play where they've been successful one for one tonight one and they had two power play goals last night so trying to capitalize here to make it a three four game. Bagley called for holding there had no option but to do something to slow Trevor shot down. Cal gets the clear immediately on the duck power play. So Trevor Schott stands behind Ben Green's get net and will try to create something here. Schott makes one guy go the other way, sends another man going the other way, and still with it is Trevor Schott, still with it, going around his defenseman, now throws it towards goal and deflected. We saw Trevor score a goal at, I don't remember if it was the alumni game or the Generals, where he skated all the way around Kiernan Galuli, using him as a screen, and then beat the goaltender himself. Now the puck's behind the net for Nathan Lutz to Warren Berg at the top of the circle. Berg, D to D, pass to uh, Stangeland, or a shot there. Berg one-timer, pucks loose, and now pounced on by Morris. Yeah, Armstrong with a great screen in front, but puck was to his left. He was looking to his right. Uh, if he had eyes on that puck, he might have batted that one home, but good puck moving by this power play so far, really making the Bears have to move and work to get that puck mm. and second unit on for the Ducks. Just under a minute left on the power play, so just past the halfway mark. Warren Berg thinking about a shot at the top of the point. Had a lot of time and now wide. Sussman asking for it. He will go to Stangeland. Slap shot blocked and 
will go all the way the length of the ice. 32 seconds left on the power play, so one last good shift of power play time for the Ducks here if they hurry. Sussman taps that forward towards Stangeland. And here's Warren Berg. Berg trying to be active and knocked off the puck. Six seconds left on the man advantage. Bagley about to escape the box and he's out, but the Ducks with possession of the puck still as we go back to five aside. Looking for a shot again, Estrada's in front all the way around and now trying to center it, deflect it. It was Derek Armstrong again. Armstrong's been very, very active today. Jordan Thompson ships that one forward. Cal won't give much pressure as they're on a line change, so the Ducks with a chance to try to work a breakout play, but intercepted by Cal. Behind the cage again. Bears looking to set up. Using the referee a bit as a screen. And now Bagley behind the goal. Duck player went down there, but picks himself right back up. That's Chris Maddox out there. Armstrong now. 16-23 and... I think Puck went out of play on that one. Out play. of play on that one. Good spot. 16-22. Left in the final frame, still four to two. Plenty of time though for the Ducks to put the puck in the net one or two more times. Gotta continue to contain this potent Cal attack though. All starts with that. Varela dumping it behind the net. Cal looking to set up again, intercepted. And then shot to Stankovic, but Taken away towards Jordan Thompson. Now Derek Armstrong trying to find Stankovic. Just had the red line when he dumped that in, so no ice and pressure from Chris Stankovic. Shot takes it away. Shot's got Stankovic and Lutz, and big collision in the middle, and Lutz couldn't do anything with it. Varela takes it for Cal. 15.45 left. Third period across the blue line through the neutral zone is Varela. Shot towards Ben Green, but goes deflected into the corner. Another shot towards Green, and not sure how, but that one finds the back of the net. It's Jamarco, the other name that we called a few times last night. And five to two, back to a three goal cushion for Cal, 15.30 left. Yeah, I don't think Ben Green ever saw that one come off the stick of Jamarco. He, uh, he was down the butterfly, but he didn't even see the shot come off the stick. And kind of unfortunate play for the Ducks because they had a pretty good start to this period. And now the deficit is back to three. And just a lot of traffic in front. Nothing Ben Green could have really done about that one. So the Ducks back on their heels again with a, th a three-goal deficit. Thrown towards net again from Cal, and again they score. And that's Oliver. Yeah, off a shot from the point. It didn't even get to Green. Oliver stopped it right there. And I think that's it for Ben Green's night. Really tough one. Noah Rosenberg back in for the Ducks after a strong outing last night. But Ben Green showed some good saves in this game today. Just nothing he could have done. It was just an onslaught of shots from the Berkeley Bears. It's, it's the back-to-backs that, that really kill you. And the Cal scored two goals tonight, two sets of times, 20 seconds apart. And, you know, even if you just take the second one off, it's still two to four. And they've just put it in the back of the net again. A rough how do you do for Noah Rosenberg. Oh, I think the referee's saying no goal, actually. We'll see where that faceoff goes. That Cal is like celebrating as if they scored. The Ducks are pretty convinced that they didn't. I think they were celebrating like it might have been his first goal of the season. The bench was chanting his name. 
I believe that was number 15 for for the Berkeley Bears. Well, six to two still. Bit of a break, perhaps, for the Ducks. And can they respond? Shot thrown through, Sammy Morris with the rebound, and no one there for it. 14.30 left. Another strong night offensively from the Cal Bears. Less response than we saw the other night from the Ducks, but still time to make a game of it yet. You can score goals in a hurry in this sport. And behind the net, Cal comes away with it again. Moving toward the top of the point, now towards the top of the circle, now behind the goal and centering in front. More good passing from the Bears, but no final shot on it that time. And Cal collects, but they have to go back through the neutral zone. I remember last night we were kind of saying how Cal's a little bit shorter, Ben, so we were trying to watch to see if their D were going to get tired at all, but they're just led by Chen and Wang the entire game, creating so much scoring opportunities. Look like they're not even phased by fatigue at all. And here's going to be an opportunity for Armstrong, but he doesn't get there before Sammy Morris does. Still comes away for the Ducks, perhaps, as Estrada tried to chip at it, but it goes into the corner, taken away by Cal. Offside go the Bears. Approximately the 384th time of the weekend. <laughs> I don't think they don't mind that because they're winning the score. Yeah, they're I, think, the game they'll, on the I think they'll board take it. Now. Yeah, if I'm the Ducks here, I just want to try to keep the puck away from Berkeley right now because... Like we said, the entire night of tonight and most of last night. Last night was a little bit more even in terms of puck possession, but you just want to make sure Noah doesn't have to see any more shots for the rest of the game and make his life a little bit easier and try to get any kind of offensive pressure and just put one more goal back on the board. In front, Leone pass across. Rotenberg with a great diving save. Cal tried to make it real pretty there and Noah wasn't going to have it. Yeah, really good save by Noah, lunging across with the glove. Like you said, they're trying to be a little bit too fancy with Leone, making the one too many passes there. Could have just fired it on net. Michael's trying to share. He's scored enough times this weekend. That one goes behind the goal, and the Ducks with a chance to maybe establish some possession on it. Galuli's pass, though, too far out in front of Lutz. So hard to get that right. And 12, 16, 15 left in this period. Big hit thrown there, and it's going to cause the Bears to go in offside. I can just see kind of the frustration on the Ducks with their first line trying to throw the body around. When you look up at the score, see that four goal deficit, it's always pretty disheartening for the bench. But, you know, we've seen this Ducks, uh, this Ducks team, especially from last night, just pour on the goals. So they just tried to dig deep. They can maybe get one back right now. There's a collision at center ice, all inadvertent, but it still sent Nick Jones to the ice. Warren Berg now chips it forward and only as far as the point men for Cal. So the Bears setting up again, trying to go underneath and the puck's loose and now we get a whistle and some extracurriculars. Looks like the shot by number 15, Kad Kaduo, threw the shot on goal and got his own rebound and looks like Jones and Armstrong were there to keep him away from their goalie, Noah Rosenberg. But no penalties on the play, just a bunch of scuffles in front of the net. Ah! 
Chance for Estrada now. Estrada knocks it forward, trying to use the boards for himself, and offside, just barely go the decks. Jackson Howery just had a really good shot block back there, and I think from his goaltending experience, he really knows the proper technique to perform a pretty great shot block out on the point. 11 and a half minutes exactly left in this third period. Ducks need a goal fast if they're going to make a sniff at a comeback here. Here could be an opportunity. Here's Galuli. Galuli trying to get himself a breakaway, but man, what good defense there from Kevin Wang. Lutz tried to drop that one for Galuli from behind the net, taken away by Chen. Chen with Wang and Varela also out there. Going all the way behind the net, and then Cal Player comes down in front of Ben Green. Here comes Looking for a penalty on. was Cal, and the shot from Nathan Lutz goes just wide. 10.39 left. Starting to get pretty chippy here. Penalty is going to come up against the Ducks and perhaps a response from Varela. Yeah, that was Adam Sussman there, really taking his frustration out on the Cal player, getting his stick up high. It looks like Varela also called off, so it'll be a roughing for both. Yeah, Varela gave Adam a, a shove right after the penalty and. The uh, more often than not, the referee is going to call. It's going to call in a retaliation if one's there. We didn't see that happen last night with the Jackson Howery incident, where uh, Jackson was tackled after um, making contact with the goaltender's head. We didn't see exactly what happened, so we're just going to go with what was written on the score sheet. But we did see him get tackled after he did whatever he did. And no retaliation called last night. Tonight we get the roughing call against Varela and we're at four on four. And four on four with a chance to send Trevor Shot out there. Maybe an opportunity for the Ducks, but he's not out there right now getting some rest. Stankovic knocked down. And uh oh, here's Leone on a breakaway with Rosenberg Leone. And there's the goal. I think the Ducks wanted a penalty on Cal for that height. I think they saw a high stick on Stankovic on Cal's own blue line, but the result of the play was a Leone breakaway and went forehand, backhand, a forehand. A lot of stick moves there and opened up the five hole in Rosenberg and just send it in. Yeah, you got one of the most pure scores in the packet coming down on you one on O. Oh, that's uh, it's a losing battle for Noah there. It's not, not really a save you can be expected to make. Behind the goal. I'm sure Noah would still tell me he, he should have made that save. Goaltenders tend to expect themselves to make every single save every single time, but the odds were stacked against number 30 there. Here's Warren Berg. Berg trying to dump it for a Lutz shot also behind the net. Nine minutes, 20 seconds left in the third period. It's really been all Cal tonight. That one off the side of the net. Still coming for the Bears to the point. 39 seconds left of four on four time. Behind the net, Ducks breaking out. 24 seconds left on the four on four. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left in the game. 7-2, the lead is swollen for the Bears. And they're looking for a chance to add another one. Rosenberg gets his glove down on top of that one. 8.35 left in the game, six seconds left on the power plays, or the penalties, as the case may be. Yeah, with eight minutes, 8.30 left in the third. I think the Ducks just want to try to keep their composure and not take any more extra penalties and making life harder on Rosenberg. Just want to, I know it's like incredibly frustrating. Look at the score, see seven to two, but you can't be taking any extra penalties and 
putting your team in a bigger hole than it already is. And out of the box they go. Barela and Sussman making it five aside and Looks like Kalulu will be call. I think he went a little bit too high on that hit. High sticking, I think, against Kaluli. Yep. Elbowing. I oh, tapped it, so elbowing. <laughs> Makes it real, real tough. It was already already approaching what would have been miracle comeback territory, and you take another two minutes off the clock due to the penalty against Galuli and you make it make it very difficult. Yeah, we'll see what Cal does here, if they're gonna try to pour it on the Ducks or they're just gonna waste the clock, waste off the two minutes. But judging by the personnel they have out there, it looks like they just wanna, and here's a goal by Berlea. That one I think Rosenberg got 90% of and off of his own pads. I think I might have hit it, a Ducks defenseman right in front, deflected it at the last second. Rosenberg couldn't get that cleanly. And now it's an eight to two game. <laughs> Berkeley just dominating. From probably the get go, Ducks shown flashes of good offensive pressure, but like we've been saying the whole night, they've lost the puck possession game heavily to the Bears. Here comes Cal again. Varela, the goal scorer, on the last one from Cal. 7.30 left in this game. Just taking care of administrative issues now. The contest as it stands probably been over for a couple of minutes. Yeah, refs just making sure this game doesn't get too out of hand. They're kind of by the benches right now and kind of mon mon monitoring the dialogue between the benches, making sure. It looks like he came over to the Ducks bench saying, hey, try to cut down on the extracurricular activities after the play's been over. Deflected away there. Rosenberg knocked it away from his crease. Yeah, this is always hard for referee when the game's kind of out of hand like it is right now where you see the Ducks kind of taking a few questionable calls, but you don't want to call every single time because you're putting them in a bigger hole and kind of putting the game already out of reach than it is. But Ducks should just stick to their game and try to work on the fundamentals and look towards next week. Yeah, it's going to not get any easier next week with Arizona State coming to town. Arizona State, the only Pac-8 team to beat this Cal Bears squad this year. They split a pair of games to open the season. And look out again. Here comes Cal. Going to go behind the net now. Stopping, centering again. Leone scores. Nothing. I mean, you, you know, you, you can't leave your goalie out to dry like that. Yeah, there was probably one or two defensemen back for the Ducks. Rosenberg couldn't do anything if you off a of behind the back pass by Bakley to Leone. So I don't think the Ducks are too, too happy. And Stankovic just one. took a penalty somehow. And took, a, took an unsportsmanlike. Don't know if maybe there was some magic words that Chris said or what I didn't, I didn't see it, but he didn't seem to be, uh, he seemed to have a reaction more of a really <laughs> than an argument. So I think Chris knows what he did. It's a, a hell of a set of magic words it's gotta be to get the referees to take action at this level. Yeah, we're seeing things kind of turn a little bit on the shift alone.
Now an opportunity for the Ducks. Nathan Lutz and intercepted trying to go through the middle. 5.40 left in the game. This was a two to four game at the second intermission and it's, uh, it's swollen quite a bit. Another penalty coming up. I think that was shot with the slash. But I think kind of that Cal's mentality right now is if you're going to keep taking penalties, we're just going to keep running up the score. And that looks like yeah, that's what they're just going to do. They're still sending out their top personnel for each and every power play. And the Ducks are paying for it with these undisciplined plays. Well, I mean, in goals, goals scored and goals allowed, not in, inconsequential. They can end up being... Uh, end up being used in tiebreakers. That was the official rationale given by the conference last year when Cal was selected ahead of Oregon after the shenanigans toward the end of the season. So five on three power play here for the Bears from carryover from that Stankovic penalty. Chen now on the puck and then got rid of it for Swerdlick. Here come the Bears again, going behind the net, Leone. Leone circling now between the faceoff circles, goes behind the net, deflected loose in front, somehow missing the back of the net there. Good play by Werg and Rosenberg to get that off the line. Leone and Chen. Leone will go to the center of the blue line. Chen still with it. Shot and paddled away. Rosenberg. 12 seconds left on Stankovic's penalty, and then a buck four left on Trevor Schott's penalty. Four minutes, 31 seconds left in this game with a 9-2 to two score. Yeah, I saw some good plays on that five-on-three power play from Rosenberg and Berg. Getting the puck off the line. Shot knocked away. Goes back behind the net. Four minutes, 20 seconds left. Third period, Stankovic out of the box like a dart. And just methodical on the power play from the Bears. Around the perimeter, we've seen that all weekend. Shot bounced away, 357 left in the game. And sloppy pass there from Cal. First time we've said that in a while. And Trevor Shot was given two penalties, it would appear. Didn't see the second one on the board because of the uh, the previous infraction. Looks and like he's shot. out. Oh, looks like he's just given the one penalty. So I think they, uh, I, I don't know they, if they intended to give him two, they should have put it up for, for four. It may have also been a technical mistake in the scoring booth. Referees don't seem to have reacted to it at all. So here we are, five-a-side hockey, just about three minutes left. There's Varela with the shot save. Rosenberg, 3.04 left. Kind of to the score. Delfino Varela has been fun to watch as well. Michael Leone stealing the show for Cal. Yeah, but more balance from the Bears tonight. Yeah, he's part of that dynamic duo for the Bears offense. Having 20, just as many points as Leone himself. Well, Leone taking most of the show, like you said. 2.52 left. Trying to get through the rest of this one cleanly and maybe get another consolation goal is Oregon. There's Nick Jones, but it's knocked away from him. Barkley knocked off the puck. And that one is sent down, but no ice. Bears are the first one there, and well, that play is going to have looked familiar to the Ducks. They still got nice and called against them earlier. 
220, and that one is an icing. No arguments against the Ducks. That was an interesting shift where the Ducks had their fourth line out there, and Cal had their first line. Could have been, or I guess the Ducks' third line, because. Right. But a lot of physicality on that shift from the Ducks. 2.15 left as we're back underway. I think both teams more or less resigned to this being the final score, but not done yet. Howry is taken down. That will draw a penalty. And make sure you don't want to... No retaliation. Yeah. No retaliation. Yeah, like you said, these goals are important for the Ducks. You know, the game is out of reach. The goals for and against in the standings is critically important come playoff time for deciding who is in and who is out. So if Ducks get one here, that can go a long way. You never know towards the end of the season if some tiebreakers are down by a goal or two. So, And it's also a good time for the Ducks to work on their power play again. It's been successful today and yesterday. Yeah, it's a game. It's a game. It's a, not even a game situation. It's a game to just, you know, focus on that power play almost as if it was a practice because, you know, you're not going to score seven goals in a minute, 47 seconds. This game is done. But that doesn't mean that the time can be useful for the Duck coaching staff. And Jackson Howery behind the net on the power plays. The Ducks trying to set up. It's still Howery, and it's just going to slide all the way to the point. Adam Sussman for Berg. Berg to Howery, back to Berg. Just barely kept in, and then Sussman trying to keep it alive. He does, but now it's chipped away by the Bears. A minute 14 left, and they're going to think about a shorthanded attack here. Now they just dump it in and slide off, allow Oregon to get one or two last rushes in. A minute left in the game, a minute four left on the power play, so unless Oregon scores, it'll be five on four the rest of the way. Estrada trying to go by here, and he does. He will actually get to that puck, but the Bears take it from him. 40 seconds left, shorthanded rush from Cal. Save made Rosenberg, and now Jackson Howery on it. Howry's got Estrada. There's 30 seconds left in the game as the Ducks change. Howry's the only one left on the ice for the Ducks. They've only got, uh, they got four out there, don't they? Now we're back. Okay, there's five. That can't happen. <laughs> Seth Howe trying to make something happen as he gets a real shift. Yeah, we're going to start getting some... Oh, and that will do it for this one. So the final score tonight is 9 to 2. As Cal gets their second win of the second win of the weekend, two nine goal games for Cal. This time all nine of them scored against a goaltender. You got any closing thoughts for us? Uh, yeah, the defense for the Ducks and I a lot out of sorts versus last night and the goal scoring wasn't quite there for the Ducks. But, uh, yeah, the power play looked good. Special teams looked pretty good. But just this Cal offense was too much to handle for the Ducks. They came out right from the get-go, and they really handled the Ducks in terms of possession, shots on goal, every kind of statistical category. And But like you said, this is the top of the Pac-8 that we're seeing right now is the Cal Berkeley. And... The Ducks just have to kind of pull together, work on some stuff in practice, work on special teams, def defense, offensive zone time and everything, and try to put it all together for next week's game plan against ASU. Yeah, and you, you bring it up. That will be our next broadcast, October 27th and 28th against Arizona State. Until then, we'll leave you one more time with the Oregon hockey theme written and performed by Tanner Ferris.